Good evening once again. My name is Dennis Baker. I'm the Life Raft Program Director, and obviously you will hear much from these gentlemen. Um, first things first, we want to give a shout out to Alev. Um, we're recording tonight, so he's going to see this. Unfortunately, he could not be here tonight because he had some, um, some um, things come up in New York for him. So we want to especially give him a shout out. He's executive producer, lead actor, and the writer, and we'll talk a little bit about um, his involvement as we move forward. But first, I wanted the panel to introduce himself, so jump into it. My name is Troy Smith. I produced Lonely Boy along with Alev. Uh, my name is Dale Fabregar. I was a director. And I'm Howard Meltzer. I was a casting director. So as we all know, it takes a village to make a film. So we're going to um, have them introduce the cast and crew that's in the audience. What I ask for audience members is hold the applause to the end so we can get through everyone and then give them all kind of a big applause. So I'll let you guys take it away of who's, who's out there. Yes. Uh, um, if I miss somebody, stand up and say, Troy, jerk, you forgot me. Um, but I think I saw most people that I know that are here. Richard Reilly, who played our Mr. Fitz. The, the Briona siblings are here, Issa and Teo. There they are. They played Mia and Johnny. Mateus played Little Alev, young Frankie. Mateus Ward. Growing up, growing up. I think Mackenzie Aston's in the house. In the back corner, Mackenzie played Bob. Um, Rebecca Michaels here. There she is. She was Evelyn, the, 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 the mother. Um, Diana Tawil is here, who played Renee. Nice quits. I think Jay's in the house. Greg Vratzos. Big man in the back. Yes. Robin Braxton was just over in the corner. There she is. Uh, Shirley Chen's here. I know Sh Shirley Chen's here. She was um, one of Mateus's uh, young Frankie's admirers. Are, th are those girls here? Yeah, there they are. And oh yeah, Mike. Yeah. Mike at the grocery store. Adam Zolotin. Yeah. Everybody. There's a funny story that I'll tell later about uh, Adam showing up 12 hours early for a call time. <laughs> nice. And then um, we have some crew here. Um, our cinematographer, Patrick Jones, is here. There he is. All the tall people are in the back. Um, Matt DeHaan, one of our composers, composers. is over by the... Uh, pillar right here. Pillar. Um, Yes, I know somebody else is here. Darren Epic was here, um, our co-producer. I think he bounced. We'll, we'll clap for him. Clap it out, clap um, it out. I'm sorry? Oh, Audi, Audi was, Audi's here. I'm sorry, Audi. I knew I, I, knew I was going to forget somebody. Where's Audi? There you are. I'm so sorry. Did I forget anybody else? Don't be shy. And call me a jerk. It's fine. I forgot. You can, you can, you can get them later. Um, let's jump into it. So with any film, we, you have to start with the story and script. That comes first, obviously. So Troy, you want to kind of um, let us know how that came to be? Yeah, I'll, um, I'll, I'll try to speak in the voice of Alev um, without the New York sensibility. Um, Alev, Alev wrote a script. I met Alev years ago um, in an acting class, funny enough. Um, and and he, he moved back to New York. Um, to take care of some business, and then, then one day he called me up and said that he wrote a script. Can, can I, you want to read it? I want to hear your thoughts. Um, so he sh shot me the script. Um, it was an early draft, and, and, and I, I loved it. I, so I called him up. It was a Sunday afternoon in, in January of um, 2011, I think. And I said, bro, this is, this is pretty awesome. This is, re this is really good. What, it, what do you want to do with this? He said, I want this to be my thing. You know, because you know how hard it is as an actor, starting off, um, I'm auditioning for some things. He did a role in General Hospital, which was his resume at the time. Um, 
He makes the joke himself. I'm not talking trash. Um, <laughs> Um, but he said that this is something I want to be that I can act in that can help jumpstart my career. And I said, well, that's fantastic. I think that's great. Anything I can do to help, let me know. At the time, I've been working with Howard for a couple years in casting. Um, so I said, anything I could do to help, you let me know. And he's like, well, produce this with me. And I said, okay. I don't know how to produce a film. <laughs> but let's, let's figure this out and let's, let's, let's make your movie. So that's how... He, he, he wrote the script. It was genius, I thought. And I said, yeah, screw it. Let's, let's uh, learn how to make a film. Great. So we're um, encouraging actors that are in the audience a lot of times to create their own work as much as Lev did. And so can you talk a little bit about that pre-production process? What was it like? Obviously, it's your first time. What did you learn that you're like, OK, now that I know this, maybe I would have done it a little differently? Just kind of give us some glimpses into the process. Well, originally, we were going to shoot the film in New York. Um, I love being from New York. He grew up in Queens. Um, the, the first script took place in New York, and that was the plan. Um, then we decided, this being our first go around um, at producing, and, and pr producing, not only just producing a film, but, but paying for a film, Eleven and I funded the thing, we thought, we have a better support system in Los Angeles. Um, if, if we run into a, any hiccups or if we need help with anything or questions or expertise, we can find that better in LA than we could in New York where we knew far less people. So that's, then it became um, a Los Angeles story. And at that point we had, we had Dale on um, to direct it. If you wanna jump in on any of the pre-production stuff. Um, Alev actually found Dale's work on YouTube um, yeah, and at this time I was, I was in LA, Alev was still in New York when we were in like develop, I guess the development stage, the pre, pre, pre-production stuff. And he sent me this link, he's like, what do you think about this guy? Watch this, I like his style. And I watched it and I liked his style. I was like, yeah, this, look, this looks great, let's, let's find this guy. So we tracked him down um, through his manager, had a conference call, um, Alev in New York, me in LA. Um, and, and Dale and his manager here, and we're just like, yeah, we want to make this movie. We think you'd be great to direct it. And Dale's like, oh, that sounds cool. How did you find me? <laughs> exactly, exactly. They called me out of the blue. <laughs> My manager friend calls me and said, these two guys want to call, talk to you about making a movie. I thought, okay. They want to do a feature. I said, okay, how did they find me? I have no idea. They're going to call tomorrow or whatever. <laughs> and so I was... I thought it was a joke, or I, I wasn't sure what was going on, but we had a great conversation on the phone, and these guys were very serious, so. And I actually still owe Dale an email. Um, I was supposed to send you a Lev's reel, <laughs> which, which didn't really exist. Um, I, I had that didn't, feeling, I had that feeling. He yeah. didn't have tape from General Hospital. Um, so Dale's like, well, can you, you know, can, who's gonna, Lev's gonna play this Frankie guy, right? And we're like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Dale's like, well, can you send me like anything he's done just so I can get a sense of him? I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. I, I'm on that. I'll get it together. I'll get it to you. I guess, you know, two years later, <laughs> I still owe you that email. So what, um, what about the script made you say, yes, Dale, this is first time producers. This is your first time feature. So it's a lot of new people working on new things together. What was you like, okay, this is the, my first feature. What made you say yes? Um, I had worked on a... a a lot of different projects. I did a couple of features prior to this, but they were co-directing projects, and those were great relationships and team projects. But this was the very first one, and I was always looking for something to tell a great story. And, and when I read the story, I, I called them and I said, great, this sounds awesome, uh, you know, send me the script. That's like the biggest challenge, and I'm expecting, all right, we'll get it right to you in about two weeks, and it never will come, you know. But it came, and I remember reading it, and just being uh, just really turned on by what I was uh, reading. I just so connected but with the material. Um, it dealing with the disease of schizophrenia, and it was just so exciting to me, and I just saw a lot of, um, a lot of heavy dialogue, as you can see, but I just saw a lot of great opportunities to extend that and make it visual, and so that really excited me. And, um, and so I really connected to the material as if I had written it. Um, I'm not really a writer, uh, per se, like Alev is, but um, you know, I, we both 
Alev and I bring personal perspective to the film. He personally was, um, he was inspired. The script came from his mother, um, who uh, was suffering from, she had a brain tumor. She has a brain tumor. And, and she had these symptoms, and that's where these ideas came from. And he told me all of this. And, and, um, and I, my family, I grew up with schizophrenia, but in a different way. My family, my brother, my mom, and dad, we, they had a facility that um, housed residents with schizophrenia. And so every other day when I'd pick up my mother or my brother or whatever, going to, you know, after school, um, I would sit down and wait for them and talk to some of these characters and, and see them. And they were really, you know, really interesting. And, and at one point, I remember saying, you know, I would love to do a documentary about this, this, just, I didn't know, I didn't understand it, but I was really interested. I didn't know the angle, I didn't know the take yet, but they were just so fascinating. But um, over time, that didn't work out. Parents, um, you know, we changed the business over, and, and then this script came, and it just spoke to me. Like, I, I was just right there with uh, much of it, so I just really connected with it. And so when I read it, he was real, and there was a lot of time that it took to develop, um, a lot of rewrites. Um, quite a quite a bit, and not having auditioned eleven, like I kept asking for it, but I, I knew, you know, like, <laughs> all right, it's one of these. It's gonna be. It's, I don't know. I was really nervous, which we can get to the audition process shortly. Um, but uh, I was I was nervous because here we were. I knew their expectations. I knew the kind of movie that we wanted to make, and we were always unified in that vision. And but they wanted to make a really high end film that didn't look handheld and just, they just really wanted a stylistic film, which I did as well. And um, it was gonna be a really big challenge, but you know, it all worked out. Nice. Um, so let's little talk, jump into the casting a little bit, Howard. Um, d so you, had you met Alev before you decided to and read the script or was it something you're like, basically you said yes because? Well, I said yes because Troy and I worked together and we've been working together for, it's gonna be over five years now. Yes, yeah, since um, December of 2008, yeah, I think, and officially. Troy and I actually met here at SAG at a workshop when, when he was actor Troy. And Troy started um, working as an intern, and um, I would do anything for Troy. I would take a bullet for Troy. So when Troy said to me, would you, um, we have this script, and I get this all the time, when people will say, will you cast something for me? Um, I'll say, for Troy, I'll say, absolutely, absolutely. When are you shooting? because I wasn't going to read the script unless it really was going to happen. So um, I carried the script around. I'm going, I'm going to New York. I'll read it on the plane. I didn't. Um, and I kept waiting and waiting, and I took it a few trips. It traveled with me a lot until finally Troy was saying, this is when we're going to start. And um, I said, OK. And one morning before work, I read the script, and I loved it. It was amazing. And the thing that I connected with um, is that when I read a script, all the characters talk to me. And I don't hear voices like Frankie hears voices, but I hear voices. I can clearly start picturing who these people are, who these characters are, and I start going through in my head of who I would picture playing these roles. And that to me is really exciting. So I read the script, I read it again, and then I came into the, to work and I sincerely could not wait to start on this. And I said to the guys, because it's um, SAG ultra low budget and everyone's making $100 a day, you really can't cast it that far out. And um, that began the process. Um, and the, uh, the linchpin characters were going to be Alex, who is the girl. Um, how would we just describe the character? Because they just saw the movie, so I don't have to describe it. OK, so <laughs> Alex, the girl, um, his sister, Betsy, and um, young Frankie, to me, were the most important characters to start with. And um, that's what we did. And did you, did Alev read with the people that auditioned? How did no, that process no, work? No, um, because um, Alev, Alev wanted to come to pre-reads, <laughs> which I said, that's crazy talk, um, coming to pre-reads. And the casting process for me is I'll pre-read the actors um, if I'm not familiar with their work or if they don't have a reel that they could show me. Um, I'll pre-read them, um, especially when I cast kids and young adults. It's very important for age and for look, because we had to have characters 
um, to mirror each other in different times of their lives, which is a challenge. So that's why I wanted to make sure I saw everyone first. Alev um, wanted to come to the very first pre-read, which I told him was going to be. I didn't want him to, because I wanted to make sure when he got to hear his script for the very first time by someone else than his head, I wanted to make sure the voices, not the voices in Frankie's head, the, re the voices spoke to him. Um, and that was the process. I think the first producer session I had with you, Dale, was Betsy. Yeah. And for Betsy, um, I wanted, because Dale and I had never met and we had never worked together, but I just got this sense that they were afraid because a, 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 prior to working in Los Angeles, I had cast um, lots and lots of theater and I have a pretty kick-ass New York resume. Um, working in Los Angeles, I've been really fortunate going from series to series for, for things on Disney Channel. So I was afraid that, D uh, that Dale would think I was going to bring him like very like Disney casting, which is not <laughs> what it was, but actually I did and that's a part of the other story. Um, so um, when we were casting for Betsy, I wanted just to knock it out and have Dale relax, hopefully relax, and trust me that I understood the story and the job of the casting director is to be able to get into the writer's head, which is Alev, um, and the director, to be able to have them trust me that I understand the story they want to tell and casting helps tell that story. Relax as much as a director can before jumping into a micro budget on, on the schedule that we wanted to uh, stick to. Yeah, yeah. I remember in pre-production, we're kind of back to that, and I'll jump back to the casting. I, our budget was minuscule, and we had these pre-production meetings, and I would look to see what's going to be there and what we have. And uh, my cinematographer was with me, and we were still trying to assemble our creative team. And, you know, I knew our number that we had to work with, and I just kept looking, and I said, um, Where's the dolly? And um, that's, it seemed suddenly that was all my desire was like, where's the dolly? Where's the dolly? At the end, at the end, I went up to uh, our cinematographer and we're walking out of the meeting, and I said, you know, this kind of a movie it requires. We talked about this. I mean, this is uh, the. F don't worry. And he just said, I don't care what the hell it's going to take. We're going to get the freaking dolly. <laughs> and you know, Troy and uh, and Alev, and they really, as producers, that's what they do. They really help facilitate and help the director make things happen for us so that we can you know, enable us to make the creative decisions and choices. B backtracking a little bit, um, when, when I first met Dale in person, was at a Panera Bread in Glendale, <laughs> which is a very, very fancy place to, to woo a director, to be like, hey, come on this journey with us. I've got your soup. <laughs> it's on me. Um, but he... Um, I, I, remember, I remember this clearly. Dale, Dale said, well, what kind, of, what kind of producer are you or what kind of producer do you want to be? And I said, well, bro, this is, um, this is my first go at it. I can tell you what kind of producer I'm not. I'm not going to be the type of producer who's producing over your shoulder and trying to do your job. I'm not a director. I don't know how to do that. I want you to be comfortable and have free reign to do whatever you want, and it's my job to try to make that happen. You know, your vision, you know, along with the Lev's, creatively in, in the writing, but you know, the film is, you know, visually is, is yours and Patrick, who became our cinematographer, you know, once everyone's set on that vision, it's my job to facilitate that um, through creative producing, I guess. Um, so that's what, that's what we tried, you know, I'll speak for Lev on, on this one too, that's what we tried to do from the get-go, which is, which is why I think he was so excited and wanting to come to pre-reads. Um, from the t he came out here a month before, um, about a month and a half before we started shooting, and he lived on my couch up until we were done with the film six months later in post and everything was locked. He lived on a couch for seven months and ate and bra breathed and s didn't sleep. He smoked. would watch dailies, smoked, smoked a lot. He yeah. smoked a lot. Um, this film. So from the minute you know, he got up after a 30-minute nap, called his mom back home, smoked a cigarette after that. We jumped in the car, got some coffee. I went to the office, and then he was doing, you know, either looking for locations or tinkering with a script, getting things lined up there, looking at casting tapes from our first couple sessions, looking at tapes for everything else. He, he didn't stop working, in a sense, for seven and a half months while it took to make this film, from pre-production to, to completion. And the the producing part was you put together, you got, you know, Howard. 
I kept saying, you know, you have me, we have a technical thing planned, I have designs for the shots, that's all put together, but this is a wonderful script, but we need great actors. And so, you know, when I saw and I heard who was casting, I, I said, for real? How'd you get that? No, oh, they, they worked together. I'm like, okay, and let's see who we can bring in. And of course, as you know, Howard mentioned, I thought it would be Disney, you know. <laughs> let's sing and dance. Um, oh, but, shucks, mom's a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, but, you know, it, that, I think that was um, the moment, it was one of the most exciting moments for me was when I came to casting, and Troy, I trusted them. They said, just don't come to the first pre-read, just don't come. Oh, I said, you can't let Dale come. Yeah. I'm actually used to. Well, and the reason why is that it's, it's a process, and a casting director is an editor. And I'll see lots of wonderful actors um, who may not be right for this role. I don't, th their time is very precious, and the job of the casting director is just to bring in maybe a handful of actors for the role. And for some roles, I said there's one choice um, for a couple of roles. Um, Richard really for Jack Fitz, there was just one choice. And um, um, Richard, you're wonderful. And not only being a wonderful actor, he's an incredible team player. And when I spoke to his agent and I said, really, Richard will come in? And he goes, absolutely. And they t told me how incredibly encouraging and supportive you are of young filmmakers and the process it was, you were just this incredible gift, and my whole body went, thank God, because I had no other ideas. Yeah. And for, for young Frankie, which um, to cast kids and young adults is, is what I do. Um, and um, Mateus was working on our show, and um, I just looked at him during a, during a run-through, and I said to Troy, Look at him, he's, he's perfect. So I had um, Lev come to a couple of run-throughs and watch you shoot. So I wanted him to get a sense of it before I even approached you. And um, you were clearly the choice. And not only just you're just a wonderfully skilled actor, um, it was the physicality of it that I would believe that you would morph into what Frankie was gonna be. Um, can you, for the actors in the room, can you kind of have a conversation around once you have the five or handful of actors audition and your time to make that decision, what's the type of conversations do you have? Obviously there's like family dynamics and looks and things like that, but what are the other things you guys are talking about trying to figure out? Did you guys, were you always on the same page or sometimes you're like, uh, I'm leaning this way and I'm leaning this way and let's discuss and figure it out? Yeah, with well, the process, um, if I feel that the kids are playing nicely, meaning when anytime I've worked with producers and directors and writers, if I feel they're all going in the right direction, I don't micromanage them. I will persuade them um, to make the right choices. And if I think they're gonna make the wrong choice, I'll tell them that. But I don't, you can't force someone, and you just can't. They, sometimes they just have to come around. And um, I believe in the conversations, Alex um, was the, only one of the only roles we did callbacks for because I told them as we were going through the choices and I said there's no reason to do callbacks they they were on tape what do you need to talk to them about what are the notes what do you need and Alex was one of the roles that there was a lot of discussion and we did do callbacks for Alex um, Betsy was a very long 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 conversation and we went through names of actors that would be offer only but during the casting process, Alev um, had articulated this to me, that he felt so much more comfortable hearing the words coming out of an actor's mouth. And even though he was going to imagine what it would sound like, it was better to hear them do it. Um, and um, Jay was a very big conversation. And um, we were very, very, very thrilled with, with Greg from the moment he walked into the room. And that was a role that was very much, besides we had the actors that we were, had honed it down to were all wonderful, but it was a physicality. And what, how does that, how can, there's the physicality of the actor, the moment you see them on the screen, what does that bring to this role? And that's the things that are not on the page that you just have to look at them and know. Adele, can you talk a little bit about you, um, your lead actor was also the writer. Like that's an interesting conversation, working dynamic, just how, how, 
how did you guys figure out your working relationship? Yeah, uh, <laughs> as if directing the writer, producer, star playing a schizophrenic wasn't tough enough. Um, no, he was actually, uh, he was really great to work with. Uh, like, again, when we spoke on the phone, we had just numerous conversations, countless conversations on the phone before, while he, before he got to Los Angeles. We spoke about the script, and I could hear him. I can imagine him. We would read lines back and forth. Read me this part. What's a new development on this line? And we'd open up new ideas. And I was thinking of doing this. I was thinking of doing that. What do you think? And I could, I wasn't really, I could hear him as Frankie. And so um, I, I just really felt confident in that. At the same time, you still have to see. There's something about hearing an actor, you know, there's voice technique and, and seeing your body move. But there's also something about what the camera does. You know, and how does the camera perceive um, the actor? And so you just never really know how that's going to play. And of course, there's chemistry tests that we needed to have. And I, I, we were going through all of these readings, being so you know, critical of other actors, saying, "Well, we sh should do this, should do that. We, you know, we like this and that." I hadn't even seen a live act, <laughs> and I, you know, so when we did. Well, did we did, yeah, we did. We did the chemistry reads yes. um, with Alex yeah. um, and also with um, Lynn Whitfield, who played, um, what's the doctor? The doctor, Nolan. Nolan, Nolan, yeah. Sorry, I forgot. Um, because that scene is really challenging, and there is no way, I'm not an actor. I'm a, I was never an actor. I'm a casting director, and I'm a decent reader, but there's no way I could be able to get the performance that they would needed to see from the actors auditioning unless we had, oh look, Alev's right there, we'll make him read. And um, it's the other, just go to the other side of the coin, when as a producer and a writer, um, Alev can't, he can't detach himself if he's involved in the scene. So um, that's why we would watch, they would watch the tapes over and over and over, and they'd be like, Howard, do you want to watch this with us? I'm like, no, I was there. <laughs> uh, I'm good, I'm good. It's very, like, I'll watch casting tapes um, once, maybe twice, but I, I, it's in my head. I, I know who's, who I would cast. And, you know, I said, okay, we've gone long enough. I can't take the suspense. You're going up there, and you're reading. You know, we're doing the chemistry, chemistry tests tomorrow. And so he did it. So I remember we were always behind the camera and then he picked up the script and he kind of went up there and I was just so nervous. <laughs> and he did the scene with um, Alex for the first time. And I just, the, the dolly should have been pushing in on my face because I was like, okay, I, I feel good. I feel like we can work with this and this is gonna be, I felt like we were in a good place and I got really excited and that's what I was saying is to hear the script, um, it was written and see it come to life with the actors, because it's all about the actors, you know. And to see that come to life was really exciting for me. I knew it was really gonna happen. Um, for Troy and Dale, can you give us a glimpse into the behind the scenes? We've seen the final product, but what, was there any kind of struggles or any last minute adjustments to get to, to, get to a scene that we saw? We're like, oh yeah, that, that's a great scene, but you're like, oh my gosh, if you knew the story of this scene, it took us this and this, and it was a, this challenge and that challenge. Well, the, there are a lot. The, fin the Every finish scene we could talk about. But. Yeah, the finished film's about two hours, and and I think over the the twenty some days that we shot, I don't think we had any problems. <laughs> First time in history. No, no, you you know, you know, it, you, everyone here has been on sets. You know, there's going to be problems with with everything. You know, you get everything all set up, then all of a sudden, you know, the power's out, and somebody didn't, you know, whatever. There, there, there's little things like that, but um, I I think. You know, not not that it was a problem, but we had a lot of we had a lot of first timers uh, on the on the set on the, the crew. You know, my first time as a producer, Alev's first time carrying a film and, and writing a film. Um, we we wanted the camera to live on a dolly very much, you know, for the look. And I think our dolly grip had never done it before. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, Patrick, <laughs> but I, I think I think Alex like yeah, he'd never been a dolly grip before, which you know you. You ask me, you know, a year and a half, two years ago, what's the dolly grip do? He moves the dolly around. But he's got the, all these dials, and it's like a pneumatic thing, and it, it's a ridiculously hard job. And we wanted to pull off some ridiculously hard shots. Like, you know, just in particular, if you remember after Frankie leaves Fitz's apartment, um, we have that tracking shot where it goes across the, the apartment, then it kind of like 
zooms up. That's a really hard shot, um, I'm told. I've never pulled it off myself, but <laughs> Patrick and Dale and, 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 and the crew can attest to it being really hard. But we, we, working with a young crew, we had a lot of people that were just out of film school, some that were still in it. Our first AC, I think, was 19 years old. Um, Tanya was, was 19, I think. Um, never first AC'd. A, a film before so those those would be I guess struggles that you have to overcome just people's inexperience my own uh, s s some other some other members and, and you just you know what the end product is you know in your head or through talks and everyone's on the same page and you know it's gonna you know it's gonna suck sometimes you know it's gonna be hard but that's part of like the energy and I think the drive to do something to do something that you want to make happen and I mean just, just for me my drive was to make whatever part I can offer to make a Lev script come to life, because that's what he wanted. And I said, whatever I could do, let's do this. Um, I think I went off track there a little bit, but that, yeah, like things that are hard kind of get you going. And it's like, oh, this is gonna be impossible. We don't have money, we don't have time. Screw it, let's do it. Well, you just reminded me of a specific scene. Every scene we could talk about, but uh, you know the scene with the car and Jay grabs him, there's a little fight in there. A lot of fun. We had that one location in West Hollywood um, for one day. So we had to shoot the interiors of the date scene on the couch at the table with all the extras, it was a great time. But we had to at some point go outside. Um, and by the time we actually had the opportunity to get out there, we only had about 30 minutes. So we shot that scene in 25 minutes. And it was like, I mean, it was planned. That's what was great. Um, but, I, but the crazy thing was, is it was kind of towards the end of our, like the last third of our shoot. I knew we could do it. I knew we could do this with the actors. And it's just going to, it's going to happen. And that energy, the, the time that clicked, the kick, you know, time was clicking away, gave us that energy to just push through. And it gave that, that scene so much energy. I loved it. It just was, few, we got, we got seven minutes. Let's go, let's go. Go to the other side, boom, you know, more and more and more. It just was, you know, so we did it in 25 minutes. I think we might have wrapped like two minutes after eight o'clock or something. It was just, boom, it was a wrap. It was just, a fan we just knew it was a wonderful, awesome day. Yeah, like the story, stories like that that are numerous, you know, like just making, making the day or getting that last shot. I remember like the one in the, the parking garage after Frankie comes down from the doctor's office and he looks at the poison note. And like when he's banging on the, 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 the steps, like we're getting kicked out of this location because we've hit our time. And, and we went over time a little bit and got that taken care of. And they're like, no, you absolutely have to go now. Patrick looks back, he's like, I got this. I can get this shot. And it's like that cool kind of like long shot with the yellow and the, the red car is it, just gorgeous. That's one of my favorite shots in the movie that we got in really quickly as we're packing up the truck and getting kicked out of this location. I'm not kidding, uh, if we would have held on that shot, this lady with a walkie-talkie enters on frame right and says, what the hell are you guys doing? You know, I'm calling the cops and they're like, we're done, we're done, we're done. Right? Yeah, I mean, there's things like, you know, in, in the world of independent filmmaking, a lot of it's, you know, kind of, you're solving problems as you go because either you're creating problems for yourself or they're created because it's just hard. Um, like like that, that scene with, with Jay and Frankie fighting, that was in a bar that was shut down. It was an inoperable bar that we got the day before because our other bar lo or restaurant location fell through. So we had to scramble the day before when we were outside shooting. I think it was Mateus' scene. It was in the front yard of that house. While we're shooting there, we're trying to find another bar on the phone with anybody who knows somebody who knows somebody who can get a bar. Finally, they're like, we found a place. It's not operable, but you can shoot in there. You know, they have, and, you know, our question is like, do they have running electricity? Do we need to get a generator run in there? They're like, no, 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 they have electricity. You can shoot in there. So we, we, we get there on the day. Um, we find out, one, yes, there is electricity, and it's open, but the kitchen is used by, like, a Meals for Wheels program. So they're cooking all of this food to then run out the back door to take to, to – uh, to, to needy people or to, to rest homes or something like that. So we're kind of shooting in between deliveries <laughs> or kitchen noise and pots and pans and stuff like that. But um, so that, that was one problem there with, with, with the ambient noise. But then also it wasn't an operable bar, restaurant, so we had to decorate that stuff that we had to go find on the day while our crew's unloading the trucks. 
I, I jump, after the truck's empty, I'm like, sweet, I'm taking this to go get some tables. So me and, and one of our, one of our um, set dressers jump in the thing, and we're, we go to line 204, which was you know, right down the street, kind of in, in West Hollywood. And I'm on the phone with Dale. I'm like, what kind of tables do you want? What color tablecloths? What is that color? <laughs> <laughs> and then getting the stuff back to, to dress the scene. Then all of a sudden, like, great, we got these sets. Oh, wait, this is a restaurant. We need food. So it's just like the next thing, you know, goes. It's all going in process while things are getting set up and actors are getting into wardrobe. And all of a sudden, it's like, okay, cool. Everything's set. Okay, let's go. And then, you know, you, then we make the scene. And that was the, the fake date and the real date was all done in, in one day. So it's just, you know, that, I think that's the kind of level you have to operate on in an independent film, knowing that everything's going to fall apart. Because inevitably it will. Um, and you have to kind of improvise. Let's give him a hand and say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. They're gracious to stay for a couple minutes afterwards. If you have any specific questions other than that, um, please fill out the surveys and have a wonderful evening. Thanks for coming. Thanks so much. Thank you.